In this video, you'll learn how to use the new point color tool in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. It's a great tool for an image like this where I want to unify the background, sort of simplify these colors, and there's a lot of subtlety. I need a lot of control to do that. So this is a great tool for that. But before we get into this actual edit, let's step back and take a look at a test image. So what I have here is an image which has the entire color wheel ranging from full black to full white. So it's a great test case of a lot of different color issues. If we open up Adobe Camera Raw, and then go dive into the color mixer might be the tool you would normally reach for. And let's say we want to go work on the dark greens and do something to them. Well, if I go grab the green slider, I certainly can work on greens, but I'm working on all of the greens. And I can't be any more precise than this. This is it. It's a global tool with no refinement of tolerance. So nice for simple jobs, but it's certainly not going to let us work on specific shades of green. So then you might want to go instead reach for the local adjustment where we can go to range, color range. And with the color range, I can go and sample a darker green. And here we're seeing the mask and it's actually grabbed all of the dark color. So very, very broad initially, but I can grab the refine slider and bring that in. And now I'm down to a more reasonable range of greens, but it's still the entire range of greens and even getting to adjacent colors. If we go turn off the mask for a second, you can see it's over in the science, it's over in the yellows it really isn't that precise. So let's delete this. And now let's take a look at the new point color tool, which is available as a local adjustment, but I'm going to go to the global version. So you go to the color mixer, go to point color, and then here is the new interface. And it'll probably look like this when you first open it up. What you do is you first sample something from the image. So you're picking a target color. So I'm going to go pick that dark green. And what I'm sampling is the hue, saturation, and luminosity. And they're now showing in this plot. So these dots are showing me my current hue and saturation on a 2D grid and the luminosity over here. And there's both a small dot and a big dot. When I go move the big dot around, I'm telling it what I want to go to. So if I grab the screen, I can make it less saturated. I could go and make it more yellow. I could make it brighter with the luminosity. So I have, you know, full HSL control here within these color grids. Or I can do the same thing with the slider symbol. I can see it's moving these things. So it's the exact same thing. This is just telling me what kind of change I have. But what about the precision that I mentioned? So let's say we want to go and just, let's just make this really bright and obvious so we can see what we're adjusting here. What if I want to get more precise? We've already started in a pretty good place. I've got this range slider, just like the color range. I'm going to bring this in. It's already a lot more targeted than what I had with the local color range. But we can get even more precise. If you want to be more advanced, you can open up this little disclosure triangle, and now we have control over the exact tolerance for the hue, saturation, and luminance. So these are the input tolerances, kind of like a blend if. And so I can tighten these up if I bring in the hue here on the left and bring it in on the right. You can see it's narrowing down the width here because that's my hue. So I can go all the way to this dot. This dot is my original sampled color. So I can go all the way into that. And you can see now I've got a very specific hue. And we could tighten up the luminance range to be a very specific value here, something like this. And you see now we have this super explicit control of that specific green in the image. So that's what point color is all about. It just gives you much more precision in terms of which color you're going to adjust in the image. But before we move on, I do want to show one little caveat to this tool. I'm just going to go and make this thing a little bit more obvious. We can see this here. With the other tools, they generally work on the underlying image and they're not very sensitive to other edits you make. The point color, though, is kind of working on the very last color of the image and should be the last thing you do. If I go make other changes to the color in this image, it will affect the hue and saturation and luminosity that it's looking at and actually change the pixels that it's working on, which is very different from the local color range. To demonstrate that, let's go and do a linear gradient. I'm just going to put it off to the side so it basically affects the entire image. And what I'm going to do is change the hue of the entire image. And you see when I do that, that my targeting for that point color is moving all over the image. And if I were to go and change the light values to start making it darker and brighter, see how that moves around. So that's one little watch out with the point color. It's an awesome tool, but it should be the last thing you do to your image because other changes could cause it to affect different parts of your image. So that out of the way, let's cancel this and go back to our actual edit. So going in here, again, what I want to do is simplify this background. It's a beautiful arrangement of flowers, but I really want to focus on the main flower and the ring. And to do that, I'd like to simplify some of the variability in the hues in the background, 
maybe kind of unify the tones a little bit and just help bring the viewer's eyes towards the center. Not very much, just very, very subtly. To do that then, let's take a look at how we might make some adjustments. With the point color, I can go and sample and let's go grab this magenta purple color here. And I'm just gonna work with it as is, but if I click on the mask, you can see where it's working. So everything that's remaining in color is what's targeted. And you can see it's kind of affecting areas down here and over here. It's not just this area of the image. So I might have to switch over to using this as a local adjustment. But if we try and refine things, let's see if we can get more precise here. So I wanna knock out these areas here. They look like they're a little brighter. So I'm gonna bring in the luminance range a bit. I'm bringing this in. This is the most selected, and these are kind of like the far edges of the tolerance. So you can see that's starting to knock this out, and it's eliminated a lot of this. There's a little bit here, but I can kind of play with the edges and see if I can't tighten things up and find some adjustment. Yeah, that works pretty well. So unless these little tips of the flower are going to cause me an issue, this might be pretty good targeting. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So just looking at the image again, we need to make our actual adjustment to hue, saturation, and luminance. So I want to go and maybe brighten this up a little bit, bring down the saturation a bit. And I'm just kind of watching this little edge here. You can see there's a little bit of kind of a tear in the image, if you will. If I move the saturation too far, it becomes obvious because the feathering of this isn't quite there. So if I go and kind of open up the edges, you can see where that's going to help with that, but then I'm probably affecting these areas. So I feel like I'm making too many trade-offs between these areas globally. So rather than trying to do this as a global adjustment, let's just go delete this by right-clicking on the color swatch and deleting it. And instead of doing it globally, we'll do it locally. So I'm gonna go click for local adjustment, and I'm gonna go and let's just go with the object selection tool. This is a great tool where you can just go and kind of paint over the thing we want. So this is gonna target this flower area here, if we hover, it's already done a really nice job of targeting this area. And now I'm gonna go hit it with that local adjustment with the point color. So, you know, when we use this, we're further targeting within the area that's in the mask. It's kind of like a combination of masks, but this is sort of hidden in terms of its masking, if you will. So we'll click to go sample, go pick our purple color, and then I'm just gonna leave this as it was, and let's just go bring down the saturation a bit bring up the luminance a bit and just take a look from before to after. And you can see that I'm getting some issues coming across the edge here a little bit. So we can make a few refinements. Let's see if we go and want to open up that color targeting here. I'm going to go to, sorry, hitting command plus, zoom over here. I want to open up what's being sampled here. So let's look at our mask and see where's the issue. It looks like the actual object select is kind of missing here. So what I want to do is add with the brush to make sure that area is included. That helps that. And then this pink I can remove by subtracting with the brush as well. So I'm just painting a little bit here. And I don't have to be super precise because my goal wasn't to be necessarily precise on these edges. It was really just that I didn't want my point color to affect this part of the image and it doesn't because now I'm working up here. I could have just painted the whole area. So maybe object select was complicating things too much. But now we've made this adjustment to try and simplify that a little bit. And if you decide that's too much of an adjustment, you can kind of go and take this and just change the amount slider. So kind of dial it back to where you want. So somewhere between 100 was the full adjustment and kind of halfway, something like that looks pretty good to me. So now I want to take these red values and some of these yellow values and kind of dial these back as well. The reds are probably pretty global because there's nothing in the center I'm worried about. So let's go back out and let's do a global point color on the reds. So we'll click on that. We'll go and take our saturation down a bit. Not too much. I don't want to lose the reds. I just want to make them a little bit less. More importantly, I think I want to bring the reds towards oranges. Let's go push the hue a bit and maybe restore a little bit of that color. So something like this is unifying that color a little bit more, kind of simplifies that. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to do a vignette at the end to help draw the viewer's attention in. So I'm just trying to make this a little more subtle and then I'm going to darken it down. I'm not trying to eliminate the color. I'm just trying to minimize that variability a bit there. So I think that's about right. Maybe dial back my color adjustment a little bit and a little less saturation, something like that. Keep some of the red, just less obvious. 
Then these greens here, I don't know that they're helping me, so I can go and add a secondary point color by clicking for the sampler again. Go click on my green and just go and bring down the saturation. So that just kind of reduces that. I don't have to worry about the local effects because that should be, yep, yeah, just kind of tied to those areas. So whenever you click this little mask icon, whatever is in color is being targeted for adjustment. And if you don't like that approach, you can just kind of move one of the sliders around and see what's responding. And that makes it pretty obvious what you're working with. So now the last thing is I want to dial back some of the yellows out here a bit. And obviously this yellow is the same as this yellow. So I have to work on a local adjustment to make this work. So let's go back to a local adjustment. We'll create a new mask. And I think what I want to do here is go select an object. And what I can do is paint in this central flower. I'm going to target this middle flower. And then once I've done that, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to invert the mask so that it's everything but this. And that way I can go then use my yellow point color to kind of dial that in and get that right. So let's take a look at this mask. Pretty good. I missed a little area here. So let's go add with a select object. Go paint over that area. Let's see how we did now. That missed the mark. What did I miss there? We have this area. We added this. Oh, sorry, the overall mask is like this. Uh, that's looking pretty good. And then just looking at what else is in here. Am I missing any other things? Seems pretty good. So I think I got that. It's kind of going up into the purples though. Let's try one more time. Let's go and delete that secondary one. So uh, wrong one. Let's undo that. I need to delete object two was the wrong one. Let's try one more time. Let's go add a um, select objects and this time just use a smaller brush be a little more careful to paint over that area and get less of that purple area something like that there that's much more precise there we go so now with this selected what i want to do is invert the overall mask i'm going to go click on the top for the combined mask click and choose to invert the mask so now it's everything outside of that flower perfect and now we can go to the point color and so this will be working on point color for everything outside the central flower. So go and select our yellow. Let's take a look at our mask targeting and see what we have here. It's not enough. We're not getting into all the details of these flowers here. And that's probably going to be an issue. So I want to make sure I at least have this full yellow selected here. So we could go increase the range. And that helps a bit. We're still missing some things. So if we go look at the image, this is more red. I need more of that hue. So let's go and take our hue tolerance and bring that out and you can see that's grabbing the rest of these areas and this up here is just less saturated and so we can grab our saturation range and allow that to be a little more generous we're just opening up the targeting here and relying on the fact that it's outside this main flower combined with this to kind of get that result and then this flower here let's just see if we can get more of that that one is pretty dark and so if we just expand our luminance range a bit you can see now we're bringing in more of that yellow flower there. So we've really kind of grown our targeting here, but that ought to work pretty well. And now what I want to do is simplify those colors. I, I like the yellow, I've kind of been pushing everything in that direction, but what I want to do is simply bring it down. So let's go take the saturation down a little bit, not too much, maybe like eight points, something like that. The luminosity could come down just a little bit, somewhere in that range like this. So now went from before to after and see how it's really starting to bring your eyes towards the central flower here and so let's just kind of go back and I'm gonna hit P to look from the original to where we are now and I like that simplification I think my colors are getting a little bit muted and I might dial that back but before I make any correction there I want to put on my vignette and just kind of look at the overall image so let's go for a local radial adjustment so go for a radial gradient drag that out place it over the center maybe grow this a little bit and then right now it's selecting the middle so we need to go and invert this so we'll go say invert and then i can go down to my light area and bring down the highlights a bit to kind of darken things down like so and let's see how this looks from before to after so i still want to bring this back a little bit but we're getting awfully close so I need to take this red adjustment, which was, I think, done globally. Let's go back to our global adjustments here. I think it's this one. That's it. It's just too strong. 
So for this one, my adjustments are these three. So remember, this tool looks complicated, but really you just, you pick a starting point and then you can make adjustments to that target here. And if you want to change the tolerance for anything, it's the range and the sliders below. So it's kind of, you pick a target, then you can refine what the target is down below and the adjustments are in the middle. So it's a little bit weird because the targeting is on the top and the very bottom and the adjustments are in the middle, but that's just how it works. And so what we've done here is a little too strong and it's all saturation. So let's go and, sorry, I'm on my greens. I need to go pick my reds. This is the one. So we've made a hue shift and a saturation shift. Let's go bring our hue shift in a little bit, something like halfway or around like nine, bring up our saturation just a little bit. Was it like, I think, yeah, something like that. Maybe eh, getting back where I was actually. I think that looks pretty good. And now just look from before with the P key to after. And it's a subtle thing that I think just really helps this image sing. If you personally want to change the ratios on any of this, you can nudge these colors to any hue value you want. You have total control of the raw processing of this image. Now to learn more about processing raw images with Lightroom and Camera Raw, click to this next video.